how do we avoid stressing people with wedding budgets? Now, many of you will agree with me that wedding budgets are a nightmare that when it is thrown into your face, you start getting worried on where or which budget to draw that money for the weddings. Welcome to Life Stories with Grace Kansime Mwesiji, a place where we talk about everything because we aim at helping ourselves to thrive and to grow and to be better people in this society that really has too much. To, uh, uh, everyone has too much on their plate. Now, talking about wedding budgets, must we really have the multi-million wedding? Must it be a wedding, a dream wedding on a budget that you cannot fund? Must it be 1,000 people, 5,000 people, 500 people? You are not Jesus. So don't compare yourself to the miraculous Jesus who fed 5,000 people at a go. Now, I'm not saying that hosting so many people, if you can afford it, is bad. Personally, I did a very big wedding, but this is how I did it. I saved, we saved up with my husband and uh, we invited people because we had planned for it for more than eight months where we are going to get our money, how we are going to, what the gifts we are going to buy to our daughter and how we are going to print the cards and, the, and the, you know, every detail. And so we printed the cards and we sent out. We actually got much more money by sending out cards rather than sending budgets. No one can say we sent them a, a wedding, uh, a kuhinjira budget. How did we manage to do it? We pulled off so much money that we even had a balance out of the wedding. We had a balance, so much money, like over 5 million, that we remained with on our account after feeding over 1,000 people. Now, I am not talking about you cutting your budget and remaining with two people when you can afford 1,000. I'm not saying host uh, 20 people when you can afford 5,000 people, just like the Jesus Bible fed uh, those 5,000 people. But if it comes to a situation that you have to keep sharing your budget, you have to keep adding people to your group, you have to keep calling them to see whether they receive the budget. You have to knock on their doors and offices and homes early in the morning or late in the evening to remind them about your wedding, like they are part and parcel of it. Then that becomes a problem. So how do we avoid nagging people because of the weddings that we ourselves are creating for our own? Number one, if you are going to have this wedding, if you're going to plan on a wedding, first and foremost, save your money. Collect the money and see what is not going to stress you. Then look at your social network circles. Calculate how much these people are going to give you willingly when you invite them, realistic people. Now, if you calculate what you are very sure you are going to get from these people that are your social network, uh, teams, then go ahead and make your budget and execute it without stress. How do you execute that? Go for average venues. For instance, you know that if you, you do not have so much money and you want a beach wedding, you're going to have to look for boards, you're going to look for beautiful flowers, you're going to have these expensive tents. Go for an indoor wedding. Look for a hall. A hall doesn't require so much decoration like a tent. Look for chairs. Look for all these things that are average. Go out there and compare prices from different service providers. Don't say, oh, I know so and so. The other person used them. Their wedding was beautiful. Do you know how much he parted with? There are people who, did, who part with over 80 million just on decoration alone. When actually you need only... 5 million to finish your wedding, but you're going for expensive decorations. What does decoration add on the marriage? I know some people who have gone and, and paid expensively, and by the time they go back to their home after the wedding, the two of them are experiencing debts and shortages that none of them can withstand. Eventually, the wife goes 
or the man runs away from the marriage, stays out there, gets drunk and drunk, and the marriage ends because of wedding debts. We can avoid all this. We can avoid all this. Who told you that marriage requires a big reception? The most important part of the marriage is the church marriage, the wedding ceremony. Once it is done, go to your home, have 10, 20 people, sit down, eat a meal, let her enjoy her photography, sit a meal with close friends and, and family that care. They will foot their own bill. And when they foot their own bill, you will not remain with a budget that you cannot fund. So make small, intimate weddings receptions that you don't have to stress people no one can afford the stress that comes with you know whatsapp uh, you know they whatsapp you the the wedding uh, budget like you you really ask them to put you on, on their budget and so we can avoid those by creating small intimate weddings now gentlemen if this lady is pushing you for a dream wedding, let her remain in your dreams. Let her remain in the dream because she is a dreamer. She's not a builder. No realistic woman will push you for a dream wedding even when they know you cannot afford. No realistic woman will push you to go and beg. Beg people for money to do for her a dream wedding. Don't go for expensive dresses. If she's asking for a dress you cannot afford and you know you can only afford a dress for one million and she's asking for a dress for three million that is not a woman that is going to build you up if you know you can afford a suit for five hundred thousand don't go and look for a suit for three four million because your friend took you there cut your budget cut your cloth according to the fashion that you know they say design your fashion according to the material that you have so don't go luxurious when you know you cannot afford. I am asking you, think about the season after the wedding. What are you likely to do? When the wedding is over and people have gone, the people you have begged, others will pledge and they will not even give you the money. What do you do after the wedding? Because in most cases you run with your budget, you go to people, they pledge, and then on the last day they don't show up because they do not have the money. And so when that happens and you are there, quiet, the two of you, you and your, and your wife, you have already spent money because you created a budget and you hoped people would fund it. The moment they do not have the money to give you, at the end of that day, it is going to be you suffering alone. You do not want to start selling your property, uh, taking salary loans, taking so many other things because of that wedding budget. I would encourage you, do away with those wedding budgets that you want to throw around for different people to come and fund. Work around what you can fund. When people come to support you, it's going to be an added advantage. And when it is just an added advantage, you will have a very relaxed wedding. You, you know, even after the wedding, nobody remembers. You know, people will come on that day, they will talk about the bride, how she was dressed, they will talk about how the cake looked like, they will talk about the music. And after that, nobody cares. So whether you did a small wedding or whether you did a, we a big wedding, at the end of the day is how you live with your spouse when the wedding is over. Will you be comfortable or will you be in dreamland? And so I implore you, do a wedding that you can afford. Don't cause people to be running away from you because they are scared of the budget that you're, you're bringing. Some will even stop picking your calls because they know you're calling to remind them about the wedding meetings. Others are calling them begging meetings. So don't create a situation where people are going to start avoiding you because of the wedding meetings and the budget and the unrealistic expectations and eventually even start grumbling because so and so didn't contribute you feel entitled so don't feel entitled if someone wants to contribute they will if they do not want forget it plan what you can afford 
If you can afford big, go for it. If you can afford small, go for it. But at the end of the day, think of the life after this wedding. I thank you so much. God bless you. And let's avoid begging meetings and unsolicited wedding budgets.